Hey, thanks for tuning in to Dan Warner Media. I'm Dan Warner. Today we're going to be talking about emotions on camera and different states of mind on camera, specifically being drunk on camera. Now this is a, this is a very technical thing to do as an actor. It's a very specific uh, sort of state of mind. And we're going to talk about it. And I'm going to show you a clip from uh, a scene I did in Ray Donovan, one of the episodes I did in Ray Donovan. And we'll show you and we'll talk about uh, being drunk on camera and, and uh, how that goes and how to get into that state of mind. So let's get to it. Okay, so being drunk on camera, you know, one of the mistakes that actors make when uh, they're given an emotion in a script or uh, on their sides for an audition is they tend to want to uh, overdo it a little bit. They want to show the casting director or show the audience or show the director um, that they are being in that state. So, <clears throat> for example, if someone's angry, they get angry. Uh, and there's different levels of angry. And if someone did something to make you angry, you're not always going to be that kind of angry. Angry can be very subtle. Angry can be very quiet. Uh, if you've ever gotten in a fight with a boyfriend or girlfriend, husband or wife, and they're angry, sometimes they don't say anything. Sometimes they don't yell. Sometimes they yell, but sometimes they don't. So as actors, we have to remember and, I, and I've said this in a bunch of my videos, and that is to be a real person in a real place, having a real experience. That is <clears throat> really the cornerstone of a great scene, is to be a real person in a real place, having a real experience. And so let's talk about being drunk. Uh, if you've never been drunk before, congratulations, me either. <clears throat> All right, a couple of times, maybe. Uh, but here's the thing about being drunk, and here's the thing about being mad, and here's the thing about, uh, and we'll get into this later, uh, even crying on camera, is actors try to be drunk. Actors try to cry. Uh, uh, people do not. If you're drunk, the first thing you do is try not to be drunk, because no one wants to sit around drunk with everyone else. You know, that's a drunk. That's an actor wanting to wanting to be drunk. Mama, be drunk and show you I can act drunk. And that's not how you would act. Uh, if you've ever witnessed the evolution of a drunk, if you've ever been in to a bar or you go somewhere where you're maybe not drinking and you see someone else drinking and you see them come in sober or sit with you sober and then after three or four drinks, they're kind of drunk. You'll see this slow evolution and they never get to cartoon drunk most of the time. Um, they just get to a state of drunkenness. And if you've ever been drunk or ever witnessed someone drunk, and you know, the other thing you can do is uh, observe uh, drunk people or watch videos of drunk people. And what you'll find is one characteristic, and this is, <clears throat> this is very telling. One characteristic of a drunk person is, the, is the, not only the slurred speech, but the, um, the slow blinking. So if I'm sitting here talking to you and we're having a conversation and I'm you know, blinking at a normal rate, if I'm blinking at all, uh, I'm probably not drunk. However, If I slow blink a little bit and my speech slows down <clears throat> just a bit, and maybe it's a little slurred, but it's not super slurred, uh, because what I'm trying to do is show you that I'm, I'm not drunk. I've only had like four, but I, I ate, um, I think I ate meatloaf or something for dinner, but it was, so I'm cool. You know, 
So <clears throat> you saw the slow blink, the, the, the slower speech, uh, slightly slurred, not exaggerated, but a little bit. The blink is, and it's, and you don't come all the way up. It's not a, it's not a slow blink all the way up. It's see the, how the eyes sag a little bit. So it's, it's a little more, but you're trying to hold it together. As a drunk person, you got to hold it together. Because if you don't hold it together, then you're just a cartoon drunk and you don't want to be a cartoon drunk. You want to, you just want to uh, keep yourself together because that's what we try to do. That's, we, we just try to, to, to keep it together, man. And if you've ever had the unfortunate um, uh, problem of being pulled over by the police after you've been drinking and driving, which you should never do, but uh, then you're really trying to pull it together. Then you are, your slow blinking is less slow, your speech, you're, tr you're really trying to pull it together. So my point is, people try to pull it together. Actors try to pretend to be drunk. Do not try to pretend to be drunk. Do not try to pretend to be angry. Try to hold it together. If you try to hold it together, uh, Everyone else will be going, oh, he's drunk. I, you could tell he's drunk. So I'm going to show you a quick clip of uh, Ray Donovan, and you'll see uh, what I'm talking about. Here you go. Welcome to Buffalo Bill's Green Horseshoe Lounge, home of the famed $4 million horseshoe. Buy five green horseshoe raffle tickets to benefit the print. Do me a favor, Chip. Save the sales wrap and just pour me a vodka martini. Stir it with a twist. Sure. How's all right? That's fine. I got a strange magic. Oh, it's the strange magic. Oh, God damn it. Still not done, huh? No. You want another? Yeah. Okay, so there you saw uh, I'm being served drinks by John Voight, who's playing um, sort of the villain in this scene. And he, uh, he drugs me. He pours the drink with his back to me. And then he's got a little uh, bit of um, some sort of narcotic in a, in a little uh, eyedropper uh, uh, tube. And he squirts a little bit of that in. And it's sort of a roofie. And the, the deal is he's going to get me drunk and then this woman is going to take advantage of me. But you'll see my behavior when I'm talking to the girl also. Uh, I'm pretty drunk and I'm a little drugged. And so, uh, but I'm trying to pull it together. So you'll see me trying to pull it together here. Watch. Want a massage with the two feathers? What's that? Feather on your balls and feather in your ass. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> Let me... <clears throat> I'm Josie. Oh, cool. Hi, Josie. Where's your pussy cat? <gasps> what can I do for you, Larry? Well, Bill had a visit from an LA lawyer today. Wants to sue. What for? Apparently, a high roller came to town. His car broke down. And he ended up getting drugged at the bar and robbed in one of our rooms. It's terrible. I got some customers. Could you excuse me just for a second? Do you know anything about this, Chip? Uh, no, I do not. But I will absolutely keep an eye out. Why don't we get out uh, of here and go up to my room brothers. and take the party there? All right. Well, Bill's not too pleased. I agree with him. I wouldn't be either. Oh, I forgot my phone. Hold on a second. Okay, so there you have it. You've, you've got... Uh, you know, a little bit of slurred speech, a little bit of slow movement. You saw the slow blinking. I'm frustrated because my car's not ready. I'm looking at my phone. Um, the girl comes over. She's trying to take me up to the room and roll me uh, and take all my money after I pass out. And so they've got a little scam going on. So that's spoiler alert on that scene. But you see how I'm trying to pull it together. And then at the very end, here's what happens. So we have an understanding. Of course we do, Larry. Thank you, Chip. I would never do anything to hurt the casino's name.
Okay, so that's, uh, that was a decision that the director made. Uh, Liev Schreiber actually directed this particular episode, and they thought it would be funny if I just completely collapsed, um, which is saying that the, the alcohol and the drugs that they gave me have kicked in and I'm just, I'm done. Um, I wanted to do the scene a little differently. We shot it a couple different ways. Uh, I wanted to sort of stumble, and when I fell to take down chairs as I fell, I thought it would be more dramatic. We did it both ways. They chose that way. Uh, it was pretty funny, um, but you get the point. So <clears throat> you're trying not to be drunk. When you're drunk, you're trying not to be drunk. And so that is a, it's a key lesson in any sort of emotion or state that you're going to be in. And that is trying to do the opposite of what's going on. So you're angry, try not to be angry. If you are uh, uh, sad, try not to cry. If you try not to cry, the audience will cry for you. They, they, they'll pick up on the emotion and they'll get weepy, thinking that you're probably about to cry. But And that is the most emotional thing. That's the most uh, sort of uh, heart-wrenching thing is when you see someone about to cry and then they just, and they don't because they're trying to hold it in. And that, that gets everybody. Uh, and we'll do another, uh, I'll do another episode on, uh, on crying and different emotions and all that. But uh, today we're just going to focus on the, the being drunk. Um, listen, I have a website that uh, I do private coaching. And um, I do all kinds of stuff on my website, danwarnermedia.com. Check it out. Uh, also, uh, to get these parts uh, where you're emotional or you're drunk or any of those things... Those are parts that usually come from your agent or your manager. Uh, they're usually not, they don't give those parts out to people who are self-submitting. And so uh, this is really important. Having an agent or a manager is, uh, is key to moving your ball forward, to getting your career to move to the next level. And so um, I also have uh, on my website uh, an introduction letter if you're looking for an agent. Uh, you can go there and uh, it will help you. It's a template to, uh, to find an agent, an introduction letter. It's uh, super important to get uh, representation. And that will get you the, the bigger parts that will um, be more sort of, um, you know, they're, they're, they're parts that are going to get you other parts. And so when you have a part like that, like in a Ray Donovan or something like that in a bigger show, um, People watch that, and there's a lot of eyeballs on that, and not just viewers. I'm talking about producers and directors and all that. And and there has been times, uh, a lot of times, where uh, a, 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 either a director or producer or a showrunner, somebody who's you know big in the business, will watch a show like Ray Donovan or you know some other show, and they'll go, "Ooh, who's that guy? You know, he'd be perfect for, or she'd be perfect for this, this, and this that, that we're doing." Um, and so work will get you more work. And so you're not, again, you're not done when you get booked. You've got a lot of work to do. And uh, once you do the work, you'll find that um, it can get you more work. Uh, I've mentioned that before, and it's, uh, it's quite true. If this video was helpful at all, go get drunk. No, ha! don't. Don't do, don't do a case study on yourself. You know what it's like. Um, but if you don't drink, that's fine. Study people that drink or study videos of people who are drunk and get that sort of idea. Talk to people that are drunk. Maybe go to a bar and don't drink and just watch everyone else. It's a great lesson in human behavior to go to a place and observe everyone. If you don't drink or even if you do drink, go to a bar. Every other drink, drink a glass of water and just observe the people around you. Uh, you can learn a lot from human behavior by just uh, watching people and studying. Uh, you can also learn a lot from videos by watching them and studying them. And if you liked this video, hit the like button down below. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments about this particular uh, video, please leave them in the questions or comments section. Subscribe uh, to my channel, like, share, tell everyone. And uh, there you have it. Being drunk on camera. It can be a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, there you go. Uh, listen, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you next week on another episode of One Adam 12. 
one out of 12. Ha! You remember that, one out of 12? That was a good show when I was a kid. I mean, it's not on anymore. I mean, I think you can find it on some of those other channels, but one out of 12, one out of 12, see the man. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs>